For many of us, when we came into the kingdom of God, we didn't have anyone to teach us and to show us the way. And that's one of the big problems that we have as a believer. Uh, when we come to God, the churches and the ministries have not done a, a good job of showing us a clear way to live for the Lord. And that's something that's been upon my heart, to raise up proper disciples, people that are growing and learning about Jesus Christ. So here in this church, we have spiritual trainers, men and women of God that are full of the Holy Spirit that want to walk with you on a one-to-one -one basis. They want to be there to help you as you grow in the Word of God. If you would like, we want you to be part of the discipleship program right here at Faith Pleases God Church. For five weeks, these people will, will get to know you, they will walk with you, they will pray with you, with you and they will teach you the basics of Christianity so that your faith will not fail you in the times of testing. This is the time to begin your walk with the Lord. This is the time to be strong in the spirit. Become part of the discipleship program here at Faith Pleases God. We're believing God for over a thousand disciples this year in 2015. Will you be one of them? Come on out this Sunday at 11 a.m. And, and talk to us. We want to get to know you and your family. Or you could go online to faithpleasesgod.com and read more about our discipleship program. Or feel free to give us a call at 956-412-5600 and just say, I want to become a disciple. Will you help me along this way? And God will, I believe that God's going to raise up the right man and the right woman of God. We've been training them. We've been working with them. And they're ready to serve you in the ways of the Lord and teach you the good things of God. Amen. Let me pray over you. Father, I ask you to bless your I ask you to bless your people, Lord. Lord, that you will touch their life, that you will draw in the disciples from the north, south, east, and west. You said, Lord, to go and make disciples of all nations. So, Father, thank you for putting that, that burden and that desire inside our heart. Lord, I pray over the spiritual trainers that the word that they speak will be the word from heaven, Father. And, Lord, that it will make a dramatic difference in every person's life. We bless them right now, and we thank you, Father God, for those new disciples coming into the, into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. My friends, I love you. See you soon. God bless. Let's go into the Word of God. Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 5. Holland. Let's, let's do that right. Open up your Bibles. Yeah. That's better. Praise God. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 5. Today we're talking about a right relationship. You have to have a right relationship with God. Now I have two daughters, Crystal and Glory. They're a little older, so they have to use different tactics. But when they want something, I'd be sitting down watching TV. And they, one of them would come in. And she would get so close to me. She might even sit upon my lap and she will put her hand on my face and she'll look into my eyes and she'll say, you're the best daddy I ever had. <laughs> you are awesome dad. And she'll give me little kisses, little kisses. And those little kisses, I'm thinking, whatever you want, you can have it. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. <laughs> I was going to lose something, but I gained her so much more. There's so much more to have her. And so, because she had, my daughters have a right relationship with me, they could ask and love, and uh, they could come to me, and I would give them whatever I could give them. Amen? And that's the same way with our God. I want to tell you, your God is so into you. God loves you so much. The Bible says he knows the number of hairs that are upon your head. If you are bald, only your mom knows of them. <laughs> but your God, not only, the Bible says that he's numbered. In other words, he's given numbered 5,672 hair, 73. He's numbered every single one of your hairs. He knows everything about you. Even before you were in this world, the Bible says he knew you before the foundations of the world. The Bible says that if you were to count the amount of thoughts that God thinks towards you, you could gather all the sand in the world and you could come up with every one of those little kernels and that will not even equate to the amount of thoughts that God thinks about you. I'm not talking about everyone in particular. I'm talking about you. Every person individually, he thinks that many thoughts about you. 
He knows you. He loves you. I love to say this because it's so true. The Bible says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's a stalker. God is a stalker. He's following you. He's chasing after you. He's watching over you. When you sleep, he's watching. The Bible says that our God, he doesn't sleep and he doesn't slumber. He's always there. He's always with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Even, uh, while, even when you die, he'll be there. On the other side, he'll be there. Wherever you go, nothing can separate you from the presence of the Lord. Your God loves you. Amen. And so God's always desire was to be in relationship with man. You were created to have relationship with God. God wanted someone to be able to show his love to. So he created man. We were created in, in his image to have intimacy and relationship with God. Where we could walk and talk and know him. Amen. And that's the life that Abraham, I mean that Adam lived, that Adam lived. Now, in Genesis chapter 5, verse 22, says, After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Here this man Enoch, he lived 365 years walking in the presence of the Lord. You might say, well, pastor, it's impossible for someone to live that many years. Back then, they lived that many years. And he lived so many years, and he was in su he was such relationship with God that God could not wait for him to die. So he says, I'm just going to take you. I know what it's like to walk with God and to be in worship where I think that, man, I might not make it out of here where my heart was poured out before God and I said, God, all, you're all that I want and you're all that I desire. And where if God would have given me the option and the, and the opportunity, I would have said, just take me. The other day, we were, as I was been sharing with my wife that, that God's going to use us to raise the dead, she looked at me, she said, she said uh, honey, if, if, uh, if I die, don't raise me back. I'll come back angry. I want to be with Jesus. Amen. I haven't told her yes or no yet. I'm still trying to think, do I want an angry wife or amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But see, God desires that relationship. And Enoch had that relationship. He walked with God. He talked with God. The, the only scriptures on Enoch are, are what we just read. That's all that's described about Enoch's life in the word of God. But he walked with God. He talked with God. He got so consumed with God. And God was so consumed with him that the word of God says that God took Enoch. He says, look, I'm just, just come up with me. We're hanging out too much. Just be with me. The Bible says that Enoch was blessed with sons and daughters. Because he walked with God, God blessed him. When you walk with God, you will be blessed. Amen. It's impossible for you to be cursed when God is with you. No curse shall come your way in Jesus' name. Nothing shall harm you in the name of Jesus. We're children of God. Through Jesus Christ, we have been saved. We're born again. We've been created to be in intimacy and into relationship with God. And I want to talk to you about being in that right relationship because so many people are out of relationship with God. They th yes, they might have the shirt that says I'm born again. Yes, they might say, oh yeah, uh, I've given my life to God. But they're not walking with God. Amen. If you were to ask them and if they were to be true to, to where they're at with God, they would say, you know what, I did, I did the prayer. I made the confession. But even though I might have gone there with my mouth and with my words, I haven't gone there with my heart. Your words without your heart are useless. God looks at the heart. And if your heart is on fire and in love with God, then you're walking with God. If your thoughts and your meditation is on the word, if there's a worship and a praise upon your lips, and if your actions have changed to become more into the image of Christ, then you're walking with God. Then you're in a right relationship with the Lord. And when you are in that right relationship with God, 
You could pray in your time of need and you will have a peace and know, knowing that what you pray, he's heard you. It's very difficult to try to ask for something from someone you do not know. God's not interested in a part of your life. He wants all of you. We are supposed to be transformed into the image of Christ. Not trying to get Christ to become more like us. It's not your ways, but it's his ways you must follow. We're supposed to follow God, not try to lead God. And if you're trying to lead God, you're living a lie for you. You're living a lie. You're going to be disappointed in your walk with God. You're going to be disappointed not seeing your prayers answered. You're going to be disappointed in your relationship. You know, if you're trying to, to ask God to bless you on your terms, you're going to be disappointed. There's only one path to life through Jesus Christ, and you've got to surrender your life. That means your will, your emotions, everything has to be surrendered to Jesus. Amen. And so we can have that right relationship. If we want that right relationship, we have to not be conformed to the ways of this world. We, we have to be transformed by the word of God. The word of God has to be our reality. And I know you might say, well, pastor, this is the way I was since I was born. This is the, these are the things that we do in our family. This is the, the stuff. My grandfather does this. My, my, my aunt does this. You know, it's, it's okay. You know, but you know it's not. The Bible says that when you come to Christ, he takes out the stony hearts and gives you a heart of flesh. He puts inside of you the desire to follow him, the desire to love and to, to walk in forgiveness, the desire to walk in righteousness. If you were just to follow your heart and what the Spirit of God is speaking to your heart and do what the Spirit of God speaks to your heart, you will always walk in the righteousness of God. But if you're doing, if you're, well, I just feel like, doing, you know, this, this, I have to go do that. This is something we do. The, you know, the party's here. We're all doing it. Or this is what we get involved in. Well, you're walking outside of the relationship with God, and then your prayers are hindered. You say, well, pastor, I, I, I think it's okay if I, I go and stay that way. That's what you're telling yourself, and you're lying to yourself. I'm not, here, I'm not judging you and whatever you might want to be a part and do. That, I, I can only judge myself. But when you get on your knees and you cry out to God, do you have that right relationship? Or have you put a roadblock that the devil could say, God will not hear you because you're still living that way? Are you with me today? Understand this, God doesn't change. His love for you doesn't change. He still loves you. He loves you. Yes. Nothing can separate you from his love. But I'll tell you what the word of God says. When Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge, the Bible says their eyes were open and they saw themselves naked. And they hid themselves from the very presence of God. Here God was crying out to Adam, Adam, where are you? Where are you, Adam? And they came out of their hiding place. And they said, we hid. God said, why are you hiding? Adam said, because we are naked. God looked at Adam and said, who told you you were naked? God didn't come to Adam and say, you're naked, you're naked, you're naked. Adam said, I'm naked. I got to hide from God. He can't see me in my state and in my condition. God never changed the way he saw Adam. Adam changed the way he saw God. And that roadblock, that thing that you don't want to give up, or that relationship you don't want to walk away from, or that obedience that you don't want to, be, you don't want to obey, but God's told you you need to do it. It's putting a roadblock that when you get in the very presence of God, you, instead of pressing in, you pull away. Instead of going deeper in, in God's glory, the devil comes and says, you can't, you, you, you can't go deeper because you got this problem. Amen. Amen. And so to have a right relationship with God, 
We must be led by the Spirit of God. And whatever the Spirit of God tells us to do, do it. Whatever the Word of God tells us to do, do it. There are things that need to be thrown away. This past week, I was speaking to a family. I love it. How many know that God turns around negative things and makes it to our blessing? He did that. He did that. There was a, there was a, a, this one, this one lady, I don't know if she's here, but she was dealing with some problems in, 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 in depression and her whole family came. They had never been to the church before and on Monday morning, they came to visit me and we began to pray and they gave their life to Jesus Christ, amen? All five of them gave their life to Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. We began to talk and they began it came out that in their, in their house, they wanted to know why, why is there so much fear and, and commotion in the house? And I looked at them and I said, there's some things that need to be thrown away. I said, go get a bag. Ask the Lord to lead you. And then walk in every room and everything the Lord tells you to get rid of, get rid of it. Amen. I said, I'll do it for you, but I'm going to need your permission to throw away some stuff. I could care less if it was your great, 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 great grandma's clock or a chair that's been in your family from generation to generation or a picture that your, your uncle drew. Some of you need to throw some things out of your house. Amen. Amen. This is, this, I'm going to give this to you extra. I'm not going to charge you anything extra for this. But if you got some things going on in your house, you need to throw away some things. We have people moving from place to place, and they end up finding the same thing in one direction and another place. Because you bring your furniture, you bring your clothes, you bring your jewelry, and some of that stuff needs to go. Some of those things you bought in the, in the market in Mexico, you didn't know that it were, they were dedicated unto idols. There's a devil there to trying to destroy your house. And it's not a coincidence why, why every time you walk in your house, everybody's angry. You have to cultivate the presence of God. And you say, well, pastor, what do I do? You get a bag. You go before the Lord. Say, Father, show me what needs to leave. And then you walk the house. And God says, throw that away. Throw it away. I'm telling you, he'll show you secret stuff. You'll find, you'll find drugs that have been hidden from people that left them there. You'll find, you'll find pornography. You'll find all sorts of stuff. Just being led by the Holy Ghost. Show me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm not going to charge you extra for that. <laughs> then you open up the doors and say, command every evil spirit to leave this house in Jesus' name. Amen. And fathers, be a father. Be a father. Amen. Lead. Lead in your house. Lead. Amen. You're the one that has to declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. You're the one that has to be excited about coming to the house of God. Amen. You want your marriage to stay strong? You want your kids to grow up in the ways of God? You, if you don't have a relationship with God, your kids won't. Right. Amen. Amen. You're the one that God's given the responsibility of raising your children up in the ways of the Lord. Don't, don't delegate that to your wife. Right. Don't delegate it to your wife because you're weak. Get strong in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Rise up. That's for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Amen. Make that your, your confession. Even if, even if your desire or your walk is not, is, is, is not as strong, begin to declare, I'm going to be a man of God in this place. I'm going to be the strong man in this house. I don't care what that devil tries to come. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the strength of God upon my life to cast any devil out. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Begin to confess the word of God over your life. Begin to speak over yourself. I'm hungry for God's word, even when you don't want to read the word. Even when you don't want to read the word or don't know how to read the word and you find yourself, you know, you know not knowing anything about God, if you start confessing asking the Lord, Lord, get, put this word inside of me. Watch how God will put such a hunger for the word of God that you will go further in your walk with God than ever before. What are you doing? You're developing a relationship with God. Let me see your Bible. Is this the leadership Bible? This man's wife, she was telling on him. She told me in the office, she says, my husband, he's, he sleeps with the Bible. 
my husband, he wasn't like this, but, but he can't get enough of the, of the Bible. He's reading a, a book that he doesn't understand, but, but the Lord told him to read it, so he keeps on reading it. Amen. What's happening? God's transforming his life. Amen. Amen. The devil's scared of this guy. He's a man of God. Hallelujah. He knows who he is in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so you got to make a statement and a commitment to follow the Lord and to walk in his ways and to let God take you and let God lead you. And to have that relationship with the Lord that when you speak, you know that God hears you. And then you stay quiet so that God can speak to you so you can hear him. Don't you know this is a two-way conversation? Your life of prayer needs to be developed. You need to be hungry for the presence of God. Invite God's presence inside, inside your, your, your place. Amen. And ladies, if your husband is kind of wishy-washy in the things of God, begin to confess that they're men and women of God, that they're, that they're men of God. Begin to say, oh, oh, he's a mighty man of God. Just confess it. Confess it. You know, I, I don't know what it is. I, I tell you, these past couple of years, I've gotten more stronger in my physical body and healthier and and, and, you know, I'm more athletic and, and than, than I have in a long time. I think it's because every time I walk in the room, my wife, she says, oh, you sexy thing, you. <laughs> She's using her faith, praise God. I'm looking at myself, what's sexy about this? Walk in the room with a dozen donuts. <laughs> She's calling those things that are not as though they are. But now, you know, she sees me, I, you know, I'm, I'm running all the time. I'm exercising all the time. Praise the Lord. It's your fault. It's your fault. Praise God. Call those things that are not as though they are. You're going to say, oh, my, my husband loves God. My wife loves God. Oh, my, my children, they love the Lord. They're, they're disciples of the Lord. Great is their peace and undisturbed composure. Amen. Begin to speak. Speak over your own self. Speak over your own self. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, oh, you're going to the nations. You're going to preach the gospel? You're going to preach the gospel? Oh, you're going to raise the dead back to life. You're going to win souls for the kingdom of God. Speak over your own life, you know. Get into your car. Tell your car, oh, car, you're going to work and you're going to become a better car in Jesus' name. Walk by faith and not by sight. In everything. In everything. Amen. When we have this right relationship with God, we have this boldness that we could go before God with what, no matter what we're going through. Yes. And we know that he hears us. Amen. And if he hears us, we have the answer to our prayers. Amen. Don't give the devil a stronghold in your life. Walk away from those things. And you might say, well, pastor, I'm like, Ad I'm like Adam. I see myself and I'm naked. I see this problem in my life. I see this, this issue in my life that I can never get through. It's, it's like a curse that comes from generation to generation. My father did it. My grandfather did it. And I might do it myself. So many people are struggling with family curses. It's like things that have happened from generation to generation. And if you don't believe in family curses, even this world believes in family curses. Go, 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 go get an exam at the hospital and find out how much they want to know about your, about your father and your grandfather. Amen. But the Bible says those in Christ that we're new creations. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are made brand new. Go with me. Go with me to 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. I want to show you the covering that God has provided for us. No matter what you've gone through in the past, no matter what stumbling blocks in your heart and in your mind right now, that you cannot see how you could get into that right relationship with God. God has provided for us a covering. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 and 9, everyone hear me. It says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our covering is the blood of Jesus. When the devil says, how can you pray when you did those wicked things? You say, the blood of Jesus. When the devil says, how can you expect to live a life with God when you've been living a life for the world? The blood of Jesus. How can you be in the holiness, in the very presence of God, when you know that you've been so stained with the sins of this world? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has covered and washed all our sins away. For many of us, when we came into the kingdom of God, we didn't have anyone to teach us and to show us the way. And that's one of the big problems that we have as a believer. Uh, when we come to God, the churches and the ministries have not done a, a good job of showing us a clear way to live for the Lord. And that's something that's been upon my heart, to raise up proper disciples, people that are growing and learning about Jesus Christ. So here in this church, we have spiritual trainers, men and women of God that are full of the Holy Spirit that want to walk with you on a one-to-one -one basis. They want to be there to help you as you grow in the Word of God. If you would like, we want you to be part of the discipleship program right here at Faith Pleases God Church. For five weeks, these people will, will get to know you, they will walk with you, they will pray with you, and they will teach you the basics of Christianity so that your faith will not fail you in the times of testing. This is the time to begin your walk with the Lord. This is the time to be strong in the Spirit. Become part of the discipleship program here at Faith Pleases God. We're believing God for over a thousand disciples this year in 2015. Will you be one of them? Come on out this Sunday at 11 a.m. And, and talk to us. We want to get to know you and your family. Or you could go online to faithpleasesgod.com and read more about our discipleship program. Or feel free to give us a call at 956-412-5600 and just say, I want to become a disciple. Will you help me along this way? And God will, I believe that God's going to raise up the right man and the right woman of God. We've been training them, we've been working with them, and they're ready to serve you in the ways of the Lord and teach you the good things of God. Amen. Let me pray over you. Father, I ask you to bless your I ask you to bless your people, Lord. Lord, that you will touch their life, that you will draw in the disciples from the north, south, east, and west. You said, Lord, to go and make disciples of all nations. So, Father, thank you for putting that, that burden and that desire inside our heart. Lord, I pray over the spiritual trainers that the word that they speak will be the word from heaven, Father. And, Lord, that it will make a dramatic difference in every person's life. We bless them right now, and we thank you, Father God, for those new disciples coming into the, into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. My friends, I love you. See you soon. God bless.